Scream Queen Hot Tub Party, originally titled Scream Queen Review, is a modern-day nudie cutie starring 80s horror icons Brink Stevens, Michelle Bauer, Monique Gabriel, Kelly Maroney, and Roxanne Kernahan, who all play themselves. Co-directed on one long Saturday in 1991 by no-budget exploitation legends Jim Wynorski and Fred Olin Ray, this 45-minute TNA-filled flick was conceived as a way for the directors to own something themselves, rather than always being guns for hire for other producers such as Roger Corman. Shot at Fred Olin Ray's house, along with his aquarium of piranha, he and Wynorski basically gathered the girls they were dating at the time, got a few others who they had previously worked with on other films, and shot what is essentially just an excuse to show the actresses naked. What little plot there is involves the girls being invited to a mansion by a mystery benefactor. Suddenly, a box filled with lingerie and a Ouija board show up at the front door. What else are they going to do other than put on the lingerie and have a seance, as you do? They use the Ouija board, which tells them they are there to get naked. I think this is some kind of ploy by the producer to get us to take our clothes off. See? Having none of that, they decide to get in a very small hot tub and explain various aspects of being a scream queen to one another, such as Brink Stevens speaking on how to take the perfect shower. Olin Ray makes the comment that he used to call these scream queens the cleanest girls in Hollywood because they were always taking showers in their movies. Each go around the tub speaking on their particular areas of expertise, which allows the directors to splice in a greatest hits of sexy scenes from the previous films like Slumber Party Massacre 2 and Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. I'd say roughly half of the 45 minute runtime is just a clip show of scenes from previous movies. In the end, the girls realize that they need to get each other's breasts clean by washing them with a bar of soap that magically appears. The DVD of this film has a pretty engaging audio commentary track by Wynorski and Olin Ray. They are totally upfront about the reason this thing was made. It was simply to show the physical assets of these actresses, enjoy the Saturday getting to look at those assets while they were filming, and to try to make a lot of money doing it. They state this film was successful primarily because of Kelly Maroney. She had become a cult actress at this point, primarily for her memorable role in Night of the Comet, and her fans were shelling out big bucks to see her first nude scene. And unlike the other girls, who had been nude in many previous films, they had nothing of Maroney to use as a clip, so they just asked her to take her top off, lotion herself up, and filmed five minutes of her working out, because that's what she said she liked to do. For Monique Gabrielle's Dance of the Vampire scene, she just ad-libbed a sexy dance and then crawled around on Olin Ray's bed for a few minutes. He notes that he had to get rid of that bed when he got married because his wife wasn't keen on the amount of women that had been on it. If you're wondering why she doesn't have fangs, it's because she couldn't deliver her one line without a lisp. Okay, boys, ready for a bite? So she just said, I'm not putting them in. This was Roxanne Kernahan's last project. She would tragically pass away in a car accident not long afterwards. Kernahan is probably most remembered for being one of the bounty hunting aliens in Critters 2. She's easily the standout in this film. And she's the one that understands the camp of it all and does a really good over the top ditzy blonde shtick. Why not get in the hot tub? Hey! How about the hot tub? One interesting piece of info is that the actresses were full partners, even getting a percentage of the sales, which amounted to quite a bit since the film wasn't licensed to any distributor in the US and they were able to reap the windfall. Considering its success at the time, it's weird that Wynorski and Olin Ray didn't do a follow-up, though they do note that a rival company tried to get the actresses to do an even cheaper ripoff, which went by the wayside when Olin Ray threatened lawsuits. This isn't a film so much as it is a curiosity of the time. The 50s and 60s were the era of the nudie cutie, which were films glorifying the female form through the male gaze by filmmakers like Russ Meyer and Harrison Marks. Scream Queen Hot Tub Party falls squarely into that fenced off cinematic property that nobody wants to say they watch and enjoy, but do anyway when others aren't looking. Wynorski and Olin Ray just divvied up the scenes with the girls and directed them on their own, so though they are listed as co-directors under pseudonyms, neither actually directed anything together. There's no hardcore sex or anything, it's just beautiful women doing inconsequential things with no clothes on. Strangely, Wynorski and Olin Ray do not address why Linnea Quigley wasn't one of the main cast, considering that she's arguably the most famous 80s scream queen. We don't get a reason why in the commentary track, but they do put her famous Hollywood chainsaw hooker scene in the film and note that she was, quote, high as a kite, unquote, after inhaling the chainsaw fumes in the sarcophagus. So Linnea does make an appearance here in a way. As far as I'm aware, the DVD is out of print. If you do find a copy, it comes with a second film, One Million Heels BC, starring Michelle Bauer, so be on the lookout for that as well. 
Now this is the first in a new series here on Outpost Unknown that will focus on a bunch of obscure and mostly forgotten horror films, so check back soon for new videos. Thanks for listening.